that ball. Remember Pro Radio with your host, Gen T. Fuck, I don't know what, what the fuck. Yeah, fuck it. Jen is a warlord. I'm fucking coming for you. And what? now I feel poo coming out of my bum. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot right now. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to <laughs> Rambo Pro Radio. I am your host, Jen T, Twitter and Instagram at Jen T523. Well, hello, motherfuckers. <laughs> I am back from Vegas. <laughs> oh, man, tired as fuck. Um, but I had the best time. The best time in Vegas with my friends. Oh, I need to make this a quarterly thing. I need to go to Vegas with my friends more often. This needs to happen not just twice a year. This needs to happen like this needs to happen every three months. Okay, God damn it. I need a trip to Vegas because I had the best fucking time. Um, me and Little Miss Nisher. Um, me and Nessa could not stop laughing from the moment we saw each other. We just couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, God. We just, we were laughing till, oh, my God. One night, I think it was like 4 o'clock in the morning, we were laughing so loud. Oh, man. Oh, but I had the best time. And speaking of Little Miss Nessa, I have to get this out of the way. You wouldn't believe the lungs, the lungs on this woman. She ended up doing the zip line. This was on her bucket list or whatever. And uh, she ended up doing the zip line. And <laughs> I'm just going to play you the audio so you can hear her. <laughs> oh, holy shit. Okay, where is it? Where is it? I'm going to find this on you. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Jesus Christ. Okay, here we go. Um, This is <laughs> audio of Little Miss Nasher on uh, Fremont Street. Here we go. <laughs> screaming the whole time oh god bless little miss nessa i mean just <laughs> a barrel of laughs and joy we had the bestest time and i uh, got to meet with some other friends uh brother blainington and uni and uh demon mitos and his wife mrs demon mitos mrs mitos uh uncle kenzo and we'll get to him in a fucking minute. Uh, 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 motherfucking f- 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 Frankie, aka okay, Blazing, b- b- Blazing. Um, shit. Uh, Jen and Jay, I be chubby and sock sock it. Um, uh, uh, and Jen, Jen three was there, and Christy and fucking Shell and fucking uh the shit toboggan. Fucking everybody was there, man. Freaking even AZ Kelly and John came through. Come on, son. Come on. The OGs were in the building. The O fucking Gs were in the building. And and last but not least, the MVP of the trip. <laughs> the MVP. The most 
valuable player on the trip was Little Miss Renegade, okay? I had no idea how turnt this girl could get <laughs> in Vegas. And she fucking went for it. <laughs> So our beloved Ren was on last week's episode and, um, you know, uh, my girl can party. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, at one point, I think, I think it was safe to say for three nights in a row, my girl Ren was just at a slant. She was just slanted the whole time. Just drinking and hugging everybody and saying how much she loved everybody and just, oh, She is the cutest. I just wanted to put her in a little backpack and walk around with her on Fremont Street. Oh, the cutest. Oh, just a little, little poly pocket, you know? Um, but Ren, heart of gold. Her husband, Will, was on, on daddy duty and man, he saved, he saved us, okay? (laughs) He saved us. So the first, I think it was the first fucking night. Okay. Yeah. It was the first fucking night. Uncle Ken was drunk because he swears up and down. Hey, I'm going to take it easy this time. I'm not going to go hard the first night. And then he's a, he's fucking zooted, okay? And this motherfucker tries to do some weird ass shit. So I fucking kicked him, okay? I kicked him. And then this motherfucker, he trips me on Fremont Street. This motherfucker trips me on Fremont Street. I cut my hand. I get so upset, I immediately go into kill mode. (laughs) And I grab this motherfucker's legs and he tries to pull me up and I'm pulling him back into the street with me. I'm saying, I'm going to fuck your ass up. (laughs) And he's like, no, wait, no. Don't put me down here. (laughs) And then I'm getting ready. I got his leg. I'm getting ready to fucking... (laughs) I'm ready to fucking ankle lock this cat. And then Will goes, cops, 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 cops. And I was like, oh, shit. Get up. Let me get up. Pretend. And I think, not 100% certain, but I believe a, 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 a undercover cop pulled up and was asking us questions. And Will was like, yeah, hey, we're good. We're just play fighting here. So we dodged a fucking bullet the first night because that could have been serious. I could have went to j- 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 jail. Uh, I forgot Lake Las Vegas PD does not play around like and play fighting. Uh, they don't know. They're just going to arrest me and, and Uncle Ken and send us to the slammer. So uh, that would not have been good spending the night in the drunk tank and not being drunk. So <laughs> as you can see, that's a bad idea. <laughs> but, oh, man. Had the best time. Stayed at the Golden Nugget. You know, for staying on Fremont, the place is all right. But if I would have paid a little bit more to get a better room, oh, man, the place is nice. Overall, the place is pretty nice. Um, I will say that I'll probably have to stay there again because, let's face it, staying on the Strip is fucking overrated, super crowded, um, and expensive as fuck. So... It's cool staying in old downtown Las Vegas where the old G's are at, where all the crime, the seediness, the seam on, the, the shits, the vomits, uh, everything is there. Everything you need for the ultimate Vegas experience is there for half the price. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, because at first I'd be like, nah, I don't want to do it. But then one of the rooms I was going to get was a pretty swanky room. Uh, it was a sweet, but uh, I couldn't get a, you know, a head count to see how many people was really going and what was going on. So I just uh, decided to just give it a regular ass room because you're really not going to be in there that much. You know, you're going to be walking around Fremont, hanging with people. So you're not going to be in your room that much. But man, uh, I, I have a feeling if we do another big group get together to Fremont, I think I think we're gonna have to just get this big ass suite at the Golden Nugget, and then all of us can just stay in the room and split the cost, cause that's even cheaper. <laughs> so I think this room it sleeps ten, if I'm not mistaken, is either eight or ten. There's eight or ten beds in this in this room, so and it was fucking cheap. It was like five hundred a night. So I was like, mm, 
Five hundred a night, but eight people can sleep in here. You you split the bill on that. So let's see. I'm not very good at math, but I'm gonna just put, get out my calculator here and see. And I'm pulling this in and gonna tap in. Let's see if you got three nights, five hundred dollars times three, you know, fifteen hundred divided by eight, and will equals a hundred and eighty-seven dollars, Jack. That's cheap <laughs> for eight people. That's fucking cheap. So who knows? Maybe next time we can get something good going together and we'll just fucking get that room. So, um, yeah, I had the best time. So that was Thursday night. Thursday night, just kind of we went to the first thing, the first tour of duty you have to do when you go to downtown Las Vegas. When you go to Fremont Street, the first fucking thing you have to do is go to Evil Knievel Pizza. Because, oh, my God, the slices are a fucking maze in there. Uh, one problem, 20-minute wait for a slice. Oh, fuck. Uh, but it's good. It's definitely good. Uh, it's just a popular spot, and everybody's going there. So just uh, be prepared, go early, you know, and just be patient with them because they, uh, <laughs> the way that they got this system sorted, it's just like, I feel like they need to switch. So it's like a pizza bar spot, you know? I feel like they need to move the bar to the back and then just have the slices in the front. And then that way you can just just have people there near the door that are getting the pizza and just get your pizza and get the fuck out. And then who wants to stay in the bar? You know, you crash in. You you fill in the back of the building. You know what I'm saying? So, anywho, uh, that was fucking awesome. So, let's see, Friday, Friday, we took a journey to the world's largest weed store, 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 Planet 13. Uh, man, if uh, I smoked weed, that would be the spot. I mean, I guess I do edibles, but uh, I don't really use that much, so I don't really feel the need to be buying anything, because I got a, a, a whole freezer full of gear, so I'm like, mm, I'm solid. <laughs> but apparently other people need to buy things, so we went over there, and then... Let's see, where did we go? Oh, where did we go? We hit up, uh, what day was that? Oh, let me check. I gotta stick to my, my list here, my fucking phone, in my phone. Let's see here. Yes, Evil Pizza! And then I met, oh man, I met Kim. Kim and her husband Trevor, aka Kevin, and her parents. Oh! That family, God bless Kim's family. I mean, holy shit. Her dad, no, no, no subject is taboo with this man. I mean, when I heard that he had kissed his son-in-law at the wedding, I even fell out. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, you what? <laughs> Kim's like, yeah. <laughs> These two have kissed. I was dying. I was fucking dying. My face hurt just from talking to him. I guess he's a, a school teacher, I think, somewhere in the Southern California area. Um, and he teaches biology, but he is just just not having it. He does not play games. Conservative, Republican, uh, who will let you know. But at the same time, I appreciate that. He's old school. I like that. I wish. I wish we had more people that kept it old school. I wish for life. Um, that shoot you straight, no bullshit, and they're a hundred percent blunt, no sugarcoating anything. They just tell you like it fucking is. And if you don't like it, you can either fuck off or you can go with the, go with the flow, you know. So I really appreciated meeting Kim's family. They were fantastic. Uh, so let's see. So Friday we hit up the Mob Museum. I was kind of disappointed. Um, it was good, but. It was a lot to read, and a lot of the things that were in there, I was like, oh, well, I've already seen this on Netflix, so, mm, damn, could have saved me 40 bucks. <laughs> so, but, um, uh, what did I like? Oh, I liked that um, in the Mob Museum, they uh, just give you a complete breakdown of how things work, racketeering, uh, all of the horse race betting, all of the stuff, the, uh, how the, how the five families were split up. And I was shocked to see, I was shocked to see that at one point the mob was in San Diego, San Diego. Can you believe that? 
such a peaceful little ocean town. And the mob was there. So apparently they had this uh, dinner plate set up. And it had all the plates of all the places where, where the mob has had headquarters at. And I was looking at all the dinner plates and I saw San Diego and I was like, holy shit, man, these motherfuckers, <laughs> they everywhere, Jack. Um, my favorite plate, though, was Kansas. I was like, you, why the hell you? Oh, I know why you guys pick Kansas, because Kansas, you're in the middle of fucking nowhere. You're... uh in the middle of the country, so if you're distributing drugs or stolen goods or uh, uh, people, if you will, and you're in, in Kansas, you know, you're probably, what, four or five hours from the Canadian border. Um, you're about a day drive away from New York or, or uh, four, maybe ten hour drive from Kansas to Philly. Um and then same with Vegas, maybe a day and a half travel to, to Las Vegas. So that was pretty clever coming up with a little mafia headquarters in Kansas because there is nothing in fucking Kansas, even to this day. The only thing I know about Kansas is motherfucking Smallville, and that's a real place. <laughs> I've fucking seen it, man. Smallville, Kansas is real. <laughs> but I was hoping to, to see if Lois Lane was there. Aye, let's get it. Man, Smallville. I only, I only watch that show. I'm sorry, y'all. I only watch that show. Um, we, well, I did like Superman, but also because of Kristen Crux. Hello. I mean, damn. She was a, she was steamy. A straight dime piece. Kristen Crux. Fucking Lois Lane. Mmm. And then the other chick that was fucking Lois. Mmm. Delicious. Delicious. Um, yes, I, 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 <laughs> I watch TD Buffer shows for the hot girls. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh man. Uh, then we hit up Nacho Daddy and man, who is your motherfucking daddy? Nacho Daddy. They give you nachos the size of the largest plate you've ever seen. I mean, it's just like a tire. They just come out with a tire full of nachos and you can't fucking finish it. I tried y'all. I fucking tried. I was so full. Oh, so full. Uh, delicious food. I highly recommend it is on the corner next to White Castle. Yeah next to White Castle on uh, Fremont Street. Not your daddy. Uh, then, of course, Saturday we hit up p -p 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 Pizza Rock. Pizza Rock has some world famous, they've won some culinary awards for their pizza. Uh, their individual slices, I feel like, are better than their actual, like, if you sit down, because they have the restaurant divided up into two places. They have the bar in the back, like you should, like you fucking should. Evil pizza. Um, they have the slices in the front, so you get the slices in the front, and I feel like the slices in the front, the different variances and flavors, um, it's, it's better. It's just better because they're making it fresh right there. You know, I mean, not that they're not making your regular whole pizza fresh, but something that it's just like the slices there. Um, it's really good. It's really tasty. Uh, I got a whole pizza in the pepperoni and it was eh, so, so. It was all right. So, but uh, award winning pizza, if you will. And, and then we had the fights. We had the fights. Israel Adesanya and uh, Alex Pereira. Watch that in Will and Ren's suite. And their suite was amazing. I said, man, I should have got a fucking suite. Damn it. I fucked up. Um, then we went to Ellis' comedy show. And met up with a hundred other fucking people who bought tickets to see Ellis do his gay jokes. Uh, we had a great time. Um, man, it's just the week. It went by so fucking fast. I was having so much fun. I was like, God damn it. It's fucking over, you know? Um, I just, I wished. I have fun, you know. When I'm back to my regular life, I have fun, you know, but. This kind of fun was just something different. I think because you're just, you're far away from home. You really don't have to be responsible. I mean, obviously you don't want to end up in jail, but you can get pretty shit faced or do whatever the fuck you want. Get a prostitute, gamble your life away. It's Vegas, you know, you get to do what you want. And I think doing what you want and having fun 
is the best time by far. The best time. Uh, I lost my voice about two, three times, and then I got it back about two, three times. <laughs> Uh, so for those of you who are like, how come you're not drinking, Jen? How come you're not drinking, Jen? As I was like, I'm trying to save my voice for this podcast. So I was like, ooh, can't be drinking. And then also I had planned on going to 10th Planet Vegas and doing the Easter Sunday open mat. The Easter Sunday open mat was packed. But I'm glad I didn't fucking go because... I left. I had to go to an Easter barbecue with family. And if I would have stayed for that open mat, I would have not made it to that barbecue on time. That just not what would not have happened. So I uh, skedaddled out of town early. And, uh, you know, I just, I didn't want it to end. I just had such a good time. So many good memories. Vegas has, has just been so good to me. I haven't really had a bad experience. Uh, but I can say before I left... I did have some um, some epiphanies, some things that I really just needed to, to cleanse me soul with. One of them was, um, so there, God bless you, there are several, several women who send me nudes <laughs> on Snapchat, of course, of course, come on. Um, you know, I'm a professional. <laughs> and so one of these, these beloved women... Uh, I have been after her for, for, for a long time. And I thought, you know, I thought because, hey, you're sending me nudes. You tell me you want to be with me. You want to fark. You want to fack, okay? Um... So Thursday before I left, I had like a little therapy session with my therapist. And she said, whatever's going on, because you just seem like you're in a funk, something's holding you back or whatever, just release it. You can't go on this trip and and carry this burden with you. So um, I said, all right. So after (laughs) I don't know how many years this has been going on, I just said, okay, listen. You're into me. I'm into you. How hard is it for you to just come to my house and either sleep with me or start a relationship? Or we can just be friends. You can even come with me to Vegas. Okay? And we'll just work something out. Okay? Me, you, and Nessa will all share a bed. Okay? I told this woman, I've just had about a fuck enough of this. I'm just like, you know what? This ain't doing it for me. I'm going to need some sort of communication to say, hey, what's the deal? Are you just sending me news to just send me nudes because you feel sorry for me that I can't get a lady? Or are you sending me nudes because you're into me? And if you're into me, then I'm into you. Let's make this fucking happen. This ain't fucking hard. Don't make this complicated. So, and I guess she was sending me nudes as a favor, as a friend, and she just wants to be friends. And I'm like, ah, 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 ah. So that was a nice three-hour car ride where I was just like, well, now I feel stupid. Now I feel stupid because I thought, damn. This woman is sending me nudes. She must be into me. Clearly. How do I get you out of my phone and into my lap? (laughs) Oh, man. I I guess I misread the cues or the non-cues at all. And apparently, this is the story of my life. Apparently, if a woman sends you nudes, she is not into you personally. She's into just sending naked pictures of herself to people. And that's as far as it goes. She does not want a relationship, whether it's for the hour, um, for the next six months, or for, for life. She's not interested. And so I'm like, ah, I just didn't want to fucking accept it. But I was just like, No, we have to move on. This shit is holding me back. 
I don't want to entertain someone who isn't ready to either commit for an hour or for life or whatever, who isn't willing to do something to make a move. God bless you. Sending me nudes. You have the most incredible body. But there is also, unfortunately for her, there is a long line of women who send me naked pictures. Okay? And it's on to the next. For this one in particular, though, I was into her. So I was like, hey, here's an opportunity to do something about this. Don't you want to just not send nudes and just come over? Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> But I guess she just wants to send nudes. She doesn't want any attachment. And I have to accept that. I have to respect her 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 right. And that is her choice. And let's just keep the nudes coming. <laughs> oh, man. But I'm like, uh, it just, it kind of ruined it for me. I was just like, oh, man. I, fuck. You know, I hate. Revealing my cards and somebody is on a completely different page. They're not on the same page with me. I fucking hate that shit. And it happens every time. I know people say, oh, it happens every time. And it's not, you know, it's like one or two times or maybe it's like four times, but you still get the girl. So it's not every time. No, no. It's every fucking time. Every time a woman will say that she's into me. And I'm like, oh, cool. I am into you. They are. Run. It is the password to head for the hills. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Tell you no now? Is that the thing? Do I just say, oh, you're into me? Hey, that's nice. Go jog off. (laughs) What the fuck is this, man? I'm just mind fucked. I'm mind fucked. So going on this trip, I was just like, okay, we just have to fucking release this. And I just released this with lots of laughter and lots of dancing. Because that's all I can do. I can't control people. I can control myself, but I can't control people. And if this woman wants to send me nudes and tell me she wants to sleep with me and never shows up in my bed, she don't want to sleep with me. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> oh man, back to reality. Okay. Um. God damn. That's just. That was that was a bit of a an embarrassment to say the least. And you know it's it's been a week since that conversation was had, and I'm still embarrassed because I'm like, ah, fuck. I I let my guard down and getting burned. It fucking sucks, man. It fucking sucks. But I just, I don't have any other solution to this situation other than to just move the fuck on. So, and that's what I keep doing. I keep rolling on. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. I don't, I don't, I don't know what else to do. I can't, I can't make these extremely attractive women with the, the, the body oddies. I can't make them get in my bed they have to want to get there so and if they don't want to get there then okay next (laughs) on to the next on on to the next (laughs) i got new shirts new merch new three new designs are on ramboperradio.com i might have to tweak one of them so we'll just say Two and a half. <laughs> Two and a half designs are on RamboPerennial.com. <laughs> I'm wearing one of them. It is uh, an amazing shirt. And it has a really special message on the back. And, uh, you know, if you purchase it, um, you will get to learn what that message is. <laughs> um, but damn, uh, I just want to shout out to all of you. Every single one of you who have bought a t-shirt, a mug, a sticker, something from my store. I just want to say thank you so much. God fucking bless you. Um, it really means a lot to me. I'm not getting rich over this, so don't think like, oh, I bought six shirts from Jen. Jen is fucking rich. No, bitch. I ain't rich. <laughs> um, but that's not the point. I did this for people who wanted shirts, who wanted merch, who wanted designs, and so... 
um, designs are there for you to buy. And like I said, if you want uh, uh, something different, you want a hoodie, you want a flag. Uh, I got to work on rash guards for jujitsu. That's right, folks. I'm fucking, I'm working on some rash guards. Okay. Um, I want everybody on board with who's Jen because, you know, when this shit takes off, when this fucking shit takes off, I want this stupid, worthless, retarded, big nose, ugly, fucking jerk off face. Shiloh, <laughs> I want her to understand who's Jen. When this shit gets fucking worldwide, she'll understand who the fuck is Jen. Um, but yeah, no, that's uh, that that that. What's that quote from uh, from Breakfast Club? Stupid, worthless, goddamn freeloading son of a bitch, retarded, big nose, know it all, asshole, jerk off face. You forgot ugly, lazy, disrespectful. Shut up, bitch. Go fix me turkey pot pie. <laughs> God, I fucking love that movie. <laughs> oh, shit. But anywho, buying a shirt, supporting my shop, telling a friend about this podcast, that really... uh it helps the show. It helps me. Um, it lets me know that, hey, y'all want me to keep doing this shit. Uh, I see the numbers. I see the, you know, I don't like to look at the numbers, but they go up, they go down, but it's been pretty much staying up. So as long as the numbers stay up, I'm going to keep doing that. And even if the numbers go down, I'm going to keep doing it. So it really doesn't fucking matter. So um, you like, you share, you subscribe, you buy, do whatever your heart's content. Uh, I will keep continuing to do the show until I can no, no longer until I can no longer do it anymore you understand um that's what this is all a fucking about um I made digital business cards that's right folks if you're listening to this I your dear host Rambopra is offering private self-defense lessons self-defense either basic jujitsu techniques or striking techniques. That's right. I will come to your house. We can go to the park. You can come to my house. I don't give a shit. If you or anyone you know in the state of fucking California wants a private lesson from me, then you hit me up uh, at GenT523 or you, you text me or you shoot me an email, something. Let's get this show on the road. I want to do this. I want to do private lessons this is my my dream. This is my dream, and I'm hoping that uh, I can serve the great state of California by hopping in my Prius, throwing the mats in there, putting the punching bag in there, and teaching y'all some martial arts and learning to protect yourself. Um, the biggest thing for me is learning the martial arts for fitness or learning the martial arts for self-defense, just in case you don't have access to a weapon or a gun or or something to protect yourself, that you know some serious hand-to-hand combat. Um, and then, of course, the fitness aspect. I really believe that, you know, exercise is, it's been proven, they've done studies, 60% more effective than Prozac exercise. So um, I am happy to assist you or anyone you know in the state of fucking California. Okay, obviously, if you live in Northern California, you're going to have to pay a little bit more for my services because I got to get a plane ticket to you. So hopefully, if you're within at least a three-hour distance, I am more than happy to show up and teach you some martial arts. Okay, Uh, for any more details and questions, comments, thoughts, and concerns, you can hit me up via text, email, or, of course, on Instagram at GenT523, Twitter and Instagram at GenT523. Some current events, some current events. Um, man, Alex Murda, the guy who killed his wife and his own son, has been reportedly getting love letters in jail. You had to be joking. How the fuck does a piece of shit murderer get ladies... And your dear host, Ram Oprah, with a heart of fucking gold. 
who's willing to go to the ends of the earth for a woman and her heart. And nothing. No one. Nobody. No one will take me seriously. I don't understand. No, no woman will take me seriously. But you, the same ladies, will send love letters to Alex Murdoch. Does a bitch got to kill somebody to get love? I don't understand. (laughs) What do I have to do? (laughs) I just don't understand how that is even a turn on. You want to make sweet love to a man that you'll never see that's locked up? I am here. I am ready. Okay? I am ready to make a sweet love. I am here. Okay? All you have to do is say yes. Send me location. (laughs) I don't understand. I was shocked. I was just like, wow. And then I thought about that. And I'm like, oh, my my man, Charles Manson, had several wives in jail. So I was like, this is some bullshit. This is some motherfucking bullshit. So just to get back at the universe, I said, you know what, motherfucking universe? I got something for you. You don't want to let me have a lady? Then I'm going to wear the shortest shorts humanly possible, showing the biggest shamelto. To let the universe know, you know what? If you're not going to give me the lady, then I'm not going to let you have this either. Ha! Take that, universe. That's right. You want this body yachty? Well, you're not getting it either, universe. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I just decided, I was like, fuck this. I'm just going to dance it. I'm going to, I'm going to, what did I tell <laughs> Vanessa? Oh, shit. I said, this is the teachers of peaches. Fuck the pain away. Fuck the pain away. <laughs> oh, my God. If I can't, then I will I will still celebrate my independence appropriately by dancing and laughing till the end is until the curtain call, of course. Um, but certainly it would be nice for the universe to let me have this lovely woman. But uh, no, no. No. The answer is no. Denied. Um, wow. Uh, the Dalai Lama. This week, viral clip of the Dalai Lama sticking his tongue out and asking a young child to suck his tongue. Yeah. What? You f- fucking pedo. Oh, my God. This person is supposed to be so enlightened, so insightful, so spiritual. And yet, another pedo in the midst. You cannot be serious. And, and, and then his people are trying to say, oh, this was taken out of context. Take it out of context. There is no context to be made here, sweets. There is no... Uh, at any point ever in your fucking life, should a child suck on your tongue? Dude. Dude. You're the fucking Dalai Lama. Aren't you smart enough to know that? You fucking Momo. Oh, my God. It's fucking disturbing. Ugh. That's just absolutely horrendous. You know, people... Want to swear up and down religion, whoopty fucking whoop, the Lord, la 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 la, God, la 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 la, and yet some of y'all motherfuckers are hiding in there. You're doing some really, really, really bad shit, and yet you're worried about what gay people are doing, or you're worried about women's bodies, but you got pedos in the midst. You got pedos in plain sight asking them to suck your tongue. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Choke off, you fucking prick. Dalai Lama, no thanks. I am unfollowing. <laughs> Fuck that. Call the law on this guy. Piece of shit. And finally, I will end with the Ohio bus driver who went ape shit on her students because they sprayed some perfume on the bus she was driving and she has asthma and is highly allergic. So she went off. And when I say she went off, it was enough for her to get fired. But the people in the town supported her rant. This little town in Ohio so much that they're making T-shirts. They set up a GoFundMe so that this lady can pay her bills and not have to work. So I'm like, I'm all for it. So we're going to play this.
No, she said, my foot's going to be so far up your ass. My foot's going to, my foot's going to go so far up your ass. It's going to be dangling from your nose. <laughs> oh my God. Crazy bus driver. But she had to let these punk ass kids know, like she's done. She's had a fuck enough of this shit. It's over. So good for her. But yeah, they've made shirts. Oh, yeah, my foot's going to be so far up your ass, it's going to dangle from your nose. <laughs> they made fucking T-shirts. God bless that woman. Um, and speaking of, uh, I've had just about enough. Um, I think it's been going on for, what, two weeks now, two, three weeks? Uh, this whole Bud Light controversy with this trans woman, I, I don't even know who the fuck this is. I can't even keep up. Uh, first of all, this bitch did you a favor. Bud Light tastes like ass, okay? It is fucking dog shit. So I don't know what the hell y'all are getting upset about it. <laughs> and secondly, um, it's just, I listened to the new vice president of marketing. I listened to her little Zoom call she did with some somebody about, about hiring this trans woman or whatever, or their change in their image. And she, some kind of fucking Harvard business grad or some kind of bullshit or Georgetown. I don't fucking know. But this bitch, you know, God bless you. But you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Know your audience. Isn't that the first rule of business? Know your fucking audience. Okay. Guess who drinks Bud Light? What trash? Let them have their Bud Light. If anything else, you need to go find the wonderful whites of West Virginia and give them a sponsorship, okay? That's your target demo. <laughs> you think you think trans people drink Bud Light, bitch? <laughs> it's fucking stupid. Her whack-ass excuse was like, yeah, we needed to... So Bud Light's been a dying brand, and... Uh, we needed to change up the face of the fratty. We needed to get rid of the fratty culture that surrounds Bud Light. I'm like, bitch, 
How many fucking years? 50 years? 40 years? And it's worked. And no, it's not a failing brand. It's a failing brand till you decided it was a good idea to put this trans lady here. And not because she's fucking trans or you care about that. You're just trying to appeal to the woke crowd. And guess who drinks Bud Light? Not woke ass people, okay? People that drink Bud Light are blue collar individuals and my trash. <laughs> I don't mean to offend, but I'm just saying, no, your fucking target demo. Okay. Your target demo is not some fucking Momo guy wearing fucking Capri pants going out with his boyfriend in San Francisco. Okay. Your fucking target demo is kid motherfucking rock. My name is K. <laughs> no, you're fucking target, man. I just, I never went to no business school, but I've been ar- around a lot of business and I see trends and how people buy things and, and what looks good. And, you know, you want to have this woman, this trans lady sponsor you. Okay. You want to sponsor this trans woman. Okay, but who are you doing this for? You're trying to appeal, change the direction of Bud Light? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, bitch. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay, so now you've made sales start to tank, and people are really pissed the fuck off. And then not only is it pissing people off, it doesn't help the transgender cause. You're actually hurting it by being all... Uh, we gotta have this inclusiveness and we gotta da 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 in the sports and that. You're hurting the cause because you're just pissing people off. It's not helping people understand by forcing inclusion down their throat, okay? Uh, you wanna try and educate. You don't wanna force things on people. And you know, uh, as a, uh, a trans lady who, but it's just easier to be a gay lady, is a trans uh, man who is really just a, a gay lady because it's just easier to be that way um, because I don't really give a shit. Um, it's just, you want to get trans people included into the world? Start having conversations. Start talking to a trans person. Ask them questions. I mean, you don't have to be like intrusive, but ask, you could ask general questions if they're cool with it. Say, hey, I'd like to ask you about this. Is this this? Because, hey, I get people all the time and go, hey, so in the gay, is this, you know, is this, and I explain to them, nah, that's some kind of weird, woke interpretation, uh, in my opinion, because I am, <laughs> this is what I see, so I will just say this, okay? Um, I can't speak for all gay people, but I can try and be a little bit more reasonable. Can I be the reasonable side of the alphabet mafia? We don't give a shit. We just want to be left alone. We want equal rights. We don't have to, we don't have to worry about getting gay bashed when we leave our fucking house. We don't want to have to worry about will our partner be able to come into the hospital room if we get sick. Okay. We got bigger fish to fucking fry. Okay? We're not trying to force this shit down your throat. Obviously, we're trying to be a little bit more visible. But I don't want to force things on people because then that causes an even worse reaction. Okay? You got to just let people be with you gay, straight, bi, tri, whatever. Just let people be. Do their thing. And as long as you're not touching no kids... Murdering people or stealing, I think we're good. I think safe to say you're good, okay? Um, but if you're one of them motherfuckers who leaves trash in a shopping cart, well, you're a piece of shit, okay? You're right up there with fucking kid touchers, uh, fucking murderers, thieves. You leave trash in the shopping cart, you are a piece of shit, okay? <laughs> Holy shit, wow. But... Yeah, I just feel like this is all just 
gone so far wrong. And people just, you know, because you hear this one thing and they go, oh, the trannies are trying to take our stuff. Or, oh, they're coming in. Well, why don't you ask a regular ass person? Why don't you ask somebody who's not in the spotlight? Why don't you ask your dear friend what it's like to live in a household with parents who don't accept you? Okay, you want to know what it's like to to go to a school where a lot of people didn't accept you until you whooped their ass. <laughs> until you proved them wrong. And then they're like, oh, shit, I'm sorry. Let's be friends. Yeah. So why don't you ask a regular ass gay person and see what they say? You might be surprised. They don't care about that woke shit. That's all some weird Rich, weird, white people slash uppity black people that care about that shit. It's like a weird little nugget of the population. But they seem to be the loudest, so that seems to get all the attention. Us regular folk, we're not loud. We're getting shit done, okay? We don't need to make noise. We're trying to take care of business, okay? That's what I fucking do. And that's some of the gay people that I know. That's some of the trans people I know. We ain't out here trying to chase clout. We're not out here trying to make a fucking scene. We're just trying to live our best lives. Just like any other straight person. Just like any other bi person. Just like any other pan person. Just like any other asexual person. Whatever the fuck. Just trying to live our best lives. So can we have conversations? Can we be a little bit more kind to each other? Can we fucking do that this week? I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Between the fucking Bud Light bullshit and the fucking... Uh, I can't. <laughs> I just... I can't take it anymore. Oh, man. It's just too much. I just... I'm trying to demonstrate that I can be the best example of the Alphabet Mafia, which is... We cool. We just trying to live our lives. and And I hope... Um, you as whatever your orientation is or whatever's going on with you, um, or if it's a race thing, like we can just come to the center and just either agree or disagree or just see each other's sides and, and live our best lives. That's it. That's all I got to say. I'm going to end with some UFC picks because I am tired of this bullshit. (laughs) I want to turn this thing the fuck off. (laughs) I'm done. I've got to get off my soapbox and smash it to bits. Okay? (laughs) Because I'm always a lesbian, and I will build a better soapbox. (laughs) Uh, My motherfucking UFC picks for this fight card this weekend. I've got uh, Jocelyn Edwards, Gaston Balagnos, Denise Gomez, Daniel Zelahut, Jillian Robertson, Zach Cummins, I'm coming, Zach Cummins, Matthias Nicolou, TJ, downtown TJ Brown, Rafa Garcia. Who the fuck? I can't even read this writing. Chris Gutierrez, Tanner Bowser, Azamat Markamanov, Edson Barboza, and Max. Blessed Holloway. Gonna bring the thunder to Allen. Arnold Allen. Even though Arnold Allen is my one of my fucking favorite fighters. That was so hard. I could I could go either way, but I love Max. I'm gonna be an emotional uh better and, and pick Max on this, but uh, I guess if you want to make some serious paper, uh Arnold Allen for the upset, if you will. Um, those are my motherfucking UFC picks. Bet with me, bet against me. Who cares? Let's watch some fucking fights. Yeah. Um, that is all I have for you folks. I may have may not have forgotten things. I don't fucking know. Let me just check. I made notes in my phone. That's it, folks. I have covered every base that I could have could possibly covered. It is business hours in London. And I must go on about my day. I will talk to y'all next week. Much love. Let's learn how to live this week and live with each other. Agree to disagree. Go your own way. But do it with peace 
and love. Peace and love. Peace this and love. This is Rambo Radio. I'm out. Peace.